The rain poured down in torrents, drumming on the roof of the Rusty Spoon Diner as Nora parked her car in the near-empty lot. It was late, nearly midnight, and the lights flickered above the diner like tired, dying stars. She had been driving for hours, eyes heavy, neck aching, but she was close now. Another hour, and she'd be home. She stepped inside and the air hit her, a heavy mix of coffee, stale grease, and something metallic she couldn't quite place. The Rusty Spoon was like any other roadside diner, checkered floors, a row of booths, a counter lined with stools, but the atmosphere felt thick. She could feel it weighing down on her, an uncomfortable press on her chest. A man sat at the counter, his back hunched as he stirred a cup of coffee, his movements slow, rhythmic. The only other person in sight was the waitress who looked up as Nora walked in. Sit anywhere you like, she said, her voice tired, as if she'd been awake for days. Nora slipped into a booth near the door, grateful to keep her distance from the man at the counter. Just coffee. Thanks, Nora called out, and the waitress nodded. Minutes passed. The waitress poured coffee into Nora's mug, her hands steady, but her eyes darting toward the man at the counter. You from around here? She asked. Just passing through, Nora replied, sipping the coffee. It was lukewarm, bitter. Yeah, a lot of people pass through. Yeah, the waitress said. She lingered by the booth, her gaze shifting from Nora to the man and then toward the rain hammering the windows. Not everyone makes it home, though. Nora gave her a weak smile, assuming it was just a bit of small-town, late-night diner banter. But something about the waitress's eyes, they looked haunted. Enjoy your coffee, the waitress said and hurried away, casting one last glance at the man before disappearing through a door marked staff only. Nora tried to relax, sipping her coffee, trying to shake off the growing unease gnawing at her. The silence in the diner was oppressive, broken only by the occasional clink of the spoon as the man stirred his coffee. It had been ten minutes, maybe more, and he hadn't taken a single sip, just stirred, over and over. You should leave. The voice startled her, low and hoarse. She looked up. The man at the counter had turned in his seat, his face partially obscured in shadow. His eyes were dark, sunken, and fixed on her with an intensity that made her skin crawl. Excuse me? She managed to stammer. The man's lips twisted into something resembling a smile, but there was no warmth in it. I'm saying you should leave. This place, it isn't right. Look, I don't know what you're... This diner, he said, his voice growing softer. It eats people. Nora chuckled nervously, shaking her head. All right, you've had a bit too much coffee, I think. The man's hand gripped the counter, knuckles white, and his face grew hard. You think I'm crazy, huh? Go ahead, laugh it off. But you should know, once you've been marked here, it doesn't let you go. He stood up slowly, his frame tall and gaunt, and he started to walk toward her booth, his boots clomping on the linoleum floor. She felt trapped, her heart racing as he loomed over her. Let me tell you something, he whispered, leaning in close, his breath rancid, eyes wild. I came here just like you, one night, passing through. But now, now, every time I try to leave, I find myself right back here, drinking coffee that never cools, talking to people who can't hear me. You think you're having a coffee break? Think again. Your food. He backed away, his eyes fixed on hers, burning with a desperation that was chillingly real. You need to find the exit, the real exit before it's too late. Nora's stomach twisted, fear clawing at her throat. The man's voice rang in her ears, but as she turned to look at the door, she froze. The windows showed only blackness. No rain, no road, nothing. Just pitch black as if the diner floated in a void. The bell above the door jingled, and Nora whipped around. A family, a father, mother, and two kids had walked in, shaking off their umbrellas and laughing as if nothing were wrong. The kids ran to a booth, and the parents followed, looking at the menus like any other ordinary night. Nora stood up and walked toward the door, trying to ignore the man's penetrating gaze as she passed him, but when she reached for the handle, her hand froze. It wouldn't turn. She tugged harder, but the door was locked. The waitress appeared at her side, her face a mask of pity. Oh, honey, she murmured. You shouldn't have talked to him. Nora's voice trembled. What do you mean? The waitress looked away, her voice barely a whisper. Once you acknowledge it, there's no leaving. You've seen it now. You know the truth, and that's enough. Enough for what? The waitress didn't answer, just shook her head, eyes shimmering with something that looked like regret. Nora looked around frantically. The family was oblivious, ordering milkshakes and fries. 
The man at the counter watched her, his face twisted in a sick satisfaction. And the waitress stood there, hands folded, helpless. Panic surged, and she bolted past the booths, her footsteps echoing in the heavy silence. She burst through the staff-only door, finding herself in a narrow hallway with flickering lights. A door at the end beckoned, and she sprinted toward it, desperate. She slammed into it, twisting the knob, and stumbled into the diner. The same booths, the same counter, the same man now grinning from ear to ear. No, she gasped, backing away, shaking her head. No, no. The, wa the waitress came up behind her. We tried to warn you, she said softly. But the diner, it decides who stays. You're part of the menu now. The lights dimmed, casting long shadows across the walls as the man let out a low, guttural laugh. The family was gone, the booths empty. It was just Nora, the man, and the waitress in an endless diner that stretched into a dark, infinite void. Nora's heart pounded as she backed into the corner, her voice barely a whisper. Please, let me go. The man tilted his head, regarding her like prey, eyes gleaming. There's no leaving. Not anymore. The waitress sighed, handing Nora a fresh mug of coffee. It's best to drink up, she said, voice void of emotion. You're going to be here a long, long time. Nora sank into a booth, her hands shaking as she lifted the cup to her lips, feeling the man's eyes on her, feeling the darkness tighten around her like a noose. And as the taste of bitter, metallic coffee filled her mouth, she knew she would never taste anything else again. The diner was packed when Sam walked in, hungry after a long day on the road. The sign outside read, Willow's Stop, and the warm glow inside looked inviting. It was the kind of place that felt frozen in time. Laminated menus, red leather booths, a jukebox playing softly in the corner. He sat down, glancing around at the families, truckers, and travelers that filled the booths and counter seats. A waitress approached, her smile wide, but strangely blank. Her eyes glazed as she handed him a menu. Anything catch your eye? She asked. Just a burger and coffee, thanks, he replied, giving her a polite smile. He noticed that the other diners were oddly quiet, almost as if they were waiting for something. A young couple sat across from him, faces pale, staring down at their uneaten food. An older man at the counter stirred his coffee in silence, his hand trembling. Sam felt a prickle of unease, but he brushed it off as road wariness. The food arrived, and he dug in, grateful for a warm meal. As he was halfway through his burger, a shiver ran up his spine. The lights flickered, dimming slightly, and an oppressive silence fell over the room. He looked around, feeling a knot of anxiety twist in his stomach. Excuse me, he called out to the waitress, who was now standing motionless near the counter. Is there something wrong? Her gaze shifted to him, slow and deliberate, her eyes dull and empty. It's almost midnight, she said in a flat tone as if it were an answer. What's that got to do with anything? The couple across from him shot him a pleading look, and the woman mouthed something. Sam squinted, trying to read her lips, but before he could make sense of it, a loud chime echoed through the diner. Bong! 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 It was a grandfather clock, tucked in the corner, striking twelve. The sound filled the air, growing louder with each chime, shaking the walls. Sam felt his heart pound as a cold chill swept through the room. The clock stopped, but the silence that followed was suffocating. Suddenly, the other patrons began to move in eerie unison. They stood, one by one, their faces blank and devoid of expression. They stared straight ahead, their eyes glassy and distant, as if they were sleepwalking. Sam watched in horror as they slowly shuffled toward the back of the diner, disappearing through a door marked Kitchen. What? What's going on? He asked, looking around for someone, anyone, to explain. The waitress leaned in close, her face inches from his, her expression eerily calm. Midnight isn't for eating, it's for the others. Sam swallowed hard, a sense of dread seeping into his bones. The others, he whispered, barely able to speak. You should come with me, she said, her voice barely audible, yet filled with urgency. She grabbed his arm, guiding him toward a dark booth in the far corner, away from the kitchen door. But he hesitated, staring back at the kitchen, his stomach churning. Just as he began to speak, the door burst open. What he saw defied every explanation he could muster. A group of figures emerged from the darkness. They looked like people, but their skin was gray and sunken, their limbs too long and twisted at unnatural angles. Their eyes glowed a sickly yellow, and their mouths hung open, revealing rows of needle-sharp teeth. 
They moved with a jerking, insect-like rhythm, gliding toward the booths with an inhuman speed. The air grew thick with the stench of decay, and Sam felt his stomach turn. The waitress tightened her grip on his arm. Don't look at them. If they see you, they'll know you're fresh. Sam forced his gaze down, heart hammering in his chest, sweat trickling down his back. He clenched his fists, fighting the urge to run. The silence was broken only by the wet, sucking sounds of the creatures feasting on the abandoned plates of food, their bones cracking as they contorted, moving from booth to booth, sniffing the air. One creature paused, lifting its head, its nose twitching as it scented something unfamiliar. It slowly turned, locking its yellow, hungry gaze on Sam. The waitress's grip tightened painfully, her eyes wide with terror. Don't move. But Sam couldn't help it. The creature took a step closer, hissing softly, its lips peeling back in a grotesque, predatory grin. It stretched its neck, sniffing at him with a curiosity that sent icy fear coursing through his veins. With a sudden animalistic lunge, it charged toward him. Sam stumbled back, crashing into a table as he tried to scramble away. The creature's breath was hot and rancid as it loomed over him, its jaws snapping inches from his face. Run, the waitress screamed, shoving him toward the back door. Her voice filled with desperation. Sam bolted, not daring to look back. He sprinted through the kitchen, past the rows of pots and pans that hung like silent sentries. He threw himself at the emergency exit, bursting into the cold night air. His heart pounded as he ran across the empty parking lot, gravel crunching under his feet. He glanced back only once, his breath hitching in his throat as he saw them. The creatures stood in the diner's doorway, silhouetted against the dim light, their eyes fixed on him with a hunger that promised he wouldn't get far. He reached his car, fumbling with the keys, hands shaking as he finally jammed the key into the ignition. The engine roared to life, and he peeled out of the parking lot, gravel spraying behind him. He drove for miles, the road stretching endlessly before him. Only when he saw the faint glow of the next town did he feel the tension in his shoulders ease. He pulled into a gas station, slumping over the wheel, gasping for breath. A tap on the window made him jump, and he looked up to see a clerk staring down at him, concern etched on his face. Sam rolled down the window, desperate to feel the air on his face. You okay, buddy? The clerk asked. Just, just had a bad experience at that diner up the road. Willows stop. Do you know it? The clerk's face went pale, his expression shifting to one of horror. Willows stop burned down 20 years ago, he whispered. People say, they say that every so often it shows up again. They call it the Midnight Diner, and anyone who goes in after midnight, they never come back. Sam felt a chill run down his spine as the reality hit him. He glanced down at his shirt, realizing his hands and clothes were splattered with grease and something dark and viscous. The memory of those glowing yellow eyes filled his mind, and he knew, uh, with a sick certainty, that he had barely escaped the diner's midnight feast. But something inside him whispered that it wasn't over. The next time he'd feel the urge to pull off the road, the next lonely diner that beckoned to him in the dark, they would be waiting, hungry, and eager for another midnight meal. The rain had been coming down for hours, turning the back roads into rivers of mud and casting the landscape into a wet, miserable gray. Emma gripped the wheel of her car, squinting through the wipers that struggled to keep up, her GPS had died an hour ago, leaving her with nothing but a vague idea of where the highway might be. She was cold, exhausted, and starving when she finally saw it. A diner, lit up in the distance like a beacon. It seemed strange to her that a place could be open this late, out in the middle of nowhere, but hunger and fatigue won over caution. She pulled into the gravel lot and parked beside a rusted old truck with flat tires, wondering how long it had been there. She grabbed her raincoat and hurried through the downpour, pushing open the heavy glass door and stepping inside. The diner was eerily quiet, its interior dimly lit by flickering neon lights. A single waitress stood behind the counter, her eyes vacant, lips frozen in a blank smile. The diner was empty, except for a single man sitting in a booth near the back, his head down, face obscured by a hood. Emma shivered and took a seat at a booth by the window, glancing over the menu. She couldn't shake the odd feeling that something was off, like the air itself was heavy with secrets. The waitress shuffled over, her movements robotic, and without a word, she set a mug of coffee in front of Emma, 
She hadn't ordered it, but she took a sip anyway, hoping the warmth would calm her nerves. Long drive, huh? The man in the hooded sweatshirt called out from his booth, his voice raspy. Emma nodded, trying to avoid eye contact. Yeah, got a bit lost. The man chuckled, a dry, humorless sound. People tend to get lost around here. They come in, get their fill, and leave. Or at least, they try. Emma raised an eyebrow, her discomfort growing. What's that supposed to mean? He didn't answer. He just tilted his head, his face still hidden, as if he were studying her. She turned back to her coffee, trying to shake off his unsettling words, but the silence in the diner seemed to press in on her, the low hum of the fluorescent lights buzzing louder in her ears. The waitress returned, sliding a plate of food in front of her without a word. Emma blinked down at it in confusion. It was exactly what she'd been craving, a grilled cheese and fries, but she hadn't ordered it. She was about to ask the waitress how she knew when she noticed the woman's eyes. They were dull and lifeless, almost as if she were sleepwalking. The woman stood there, staring at Emma without blinking, her lips twitching as if trying to form words. Emma shivered, a chill creeping up her spine. Is everything okay? Emma asked, her voice barely above a whisper. The waitress's lips parted, and she spoke in a low, monotone voice. You should leave before midnight. Emma's eyes darted to the clock on the wall. It read 11.50. Her heart skipped a beat, and she forced herself to smile, hoping to break the tension. Why's that? The waitress's eyes flicked toward the man in the back booth, her lips trembling. You don't want to be here when they arrive. Emma's pulse quickened. Who's they? But the waitress didn't answer. She simply turned and walked back to the kitchen, her movements stiff and unnatural, leaving Emma alone in the echoing silence of the diner. The man in the booth laughed softly, the sound sending a chill down her spine. Guess you don't believe in ghost stories, huh? Emma's eyes darted to the door, every instinct in her telling her to leave. But as she gathered her things, the door suddenly rattled as if something was trying to push it open from the outside. Her heart pounded as she watched the handle twist and shake, though there was no one there. Too late now, the man whispered from his booth, his face still obscured. Emma's breath caught as the clock struck midnight, its chime echoing through the diner. The lights flickered, casting the room into shadows that seemed to stretch and pulse with a life of their own. The rain outside grew louder, pounding against the windows with a frantic, almost desperate rhythm. Suddenly, the door swung open, and a figure stepped inside. A woman, drenched from the rain, her hair plastered to her face. She looked around, her eyes wild, lips quivering as she muttered something under her breath. Emma felt a jolt of recognition. The woman looked just like her. The figure stumbled toward Emma's booth, her eyes wide with terror. Help me, she whispered, her voice echoing with a strange, distorted quality. I've been here, forever. Emma froze, her mind racing. I don't. I don't understand. The woman leaned closer, her eyes filling with desperation. They keep us here. All of us. We're trapped. Emma glanced back at the man in the booth, but he was gone. In his place sat another figure, girl no older than twelve, her face pale and gaunt, her eyes staring blankly at Emma. The air grew colder, and the shadows deepened, wrapping around the room like tendrils creeping toward her. The clock struck again, each chime vibrating through her bones. She felt the darkness close in, the walls seeming to shrink, the room stretching and warping around her. Please, the woman who looked like her begged, her voice cracking. Don't let them take you. Don't let them trap you too. Emma stumbled back, her hand reaching for the door, but it wouldn't budge. The shadows pressed closer, the faces of strangers appearing and disappearing in the gloom. Men, women, children, all with the same hollow, haunted look. She looked to the window, but outside there was nothing. No rain, no road, no landscape. Just a void of black that went on forever. The woman, her own face, whispered in her ear, They took my soul. They took us all. Leave before they take yours. Emma screamed, slamming her fists against the door, feeling the cold tendrils of darkness wrap around her ankles, pulling her back. She turned to find the waitress standing beside her, her face empty, eyes as black as the void outside. You're part of the diner now. The waitress said, her voice as hollow as her eyes. And as the shadows swallowed her, Emma realized the horrifying truth. The people she had seen, the hollow faces and lifeless eyes, they were trapped souls, each a victim of the diner's insatiable hunger. 
The next morning, when travelers drove down that lonely road, they found a diner where none had been the day before. Inside, a new waitress served coffee with a blank, empty stare, and a lone woman sat in a booth by the window, her eyes hollow, her face frozen in silent terror, waiting for someone to notice. The Willow Stop Diner had claimed another soul. The storm had been relentless, and John had been driving for hours, desperate to find shelter. He was on a back road miles from any sign of life when he saw the neon glow through the rain-slicked windshield. Betty's Diner, the sign read, flickering against the dark sky. He parked, barely noticing the empty lot and the thick silence that hung in the air. He hurried inside, hoping to dry off and grab a hot meal, but as he entered, a strange chill passed through him. The diner was empty, the smell of stale coffee lingering in the air. A clock on the wall read 3.07 a.m. A waitress appeared from the kitchen, her face pale and expressionless. Her name tag read Mary, and she moved with an odd, jerking rhythm. She said nothing as she set a menu in front of him. John was unnerved, but chalked it up to the late hour and the storm. He ordered coffee, and the woman nodded, vanishing behind the counter. He looked around the room, taking in the retro decor. Red leather booths, checkered floors, a jukebox that looked like it hadn't worked in years. When the waitress returned, she placed a steaming cup in front of him, her eyes distant, almost glassy. Busy night? He asked, trying to lighten the mood. She didn't respond. Instead, her gaze drifted to something behind him, and her lips tightened in a thin line. John turned, expecting to see someone else, but the diner was empty. Just as he was about to brush it off, he caught sight of his own reflection in the window. For a moment, he swore there was someone standing behind him, a figure blurred and shadowed. But when he turned back around, the booth was empty. His heart raced, and he looked at the waitress, but she only stared at him, unblinking. You should eat quickly, she whispered. Her voice was barely audible, her eyes flicking again to something over his shoulder. John glanced back at the booth, his skin prickling with dread. But he tried to shake it off, telling himself it was just exhaustion and the eerie quiet of the diner playing tricks on him. When his food arrived, he ate quickly, feeling an intense urge to get out of there. As he ate, though, he noticed something strange. The other tables, once empty, were filling up. A man with a torn suit and vacant eyes. An elderly couple, pale and thin, staring straight ahead as if in a trance. A young girl in a muddy dress, her eyes sunken and hollow. No one spoke, they just sat, staring at the tabletop or at each other with empty, lifeless expressions. The urge to leave grew stronger, but when he looked up at the waitress, he found her staring at him with a look of raw terror. They're always here, she whispered, her voice trembling. They come every night at the same time. They never leave. John's hands froze over his coffee cup. What do you mean? They're travelers, just like you. People who came in out of the storm thinking they'd rest for a bit, but the diner, it doesn't let you go. Once you sit down here, once you take a bite, you belong to it. His stomach churned. He'd already eaten half his meal. You're, you're kidding, right? She leaned closer, her face haunted. I haven't left in years. I don't even remember how long it's been. None of us can leave. You eat, you stay, forever. John pushed his plate away, the food now cold and congealed, as if it had been sitting there for hours instead of minutes. He looked around the diner, his eyes meeting the empty stares of the other patrons, all of whom were now staring at him with a dull, unsettling hunger. Please, just let me go, he whispered, his voice shaking. The waitress's hand shot out, gripping his wrist with surprising strength. If you leave, they'll know. They'll follow. But if you stay here, they'll leave you alone. A low hum filled the room, and John felt a strange pull, like an invisible weight pressing down on him. The lights flickered and the hum grew louder, a throbbing that filled his head and made his skin crawl. Without thinking, he jumped up, pulling his arm free. The other patrons' heads turned in unison, their eyes narrowing with a dark, primal hunger. They began to stand, their bodies moving in jerking, unnatural motions as they shuffled toward him, their feet dragging across the checkered floor. The waitress stepped back, her expression blank, resigned. Run, she whispered. You might still have a chance. Heart pounding, John bolted for the door. He didn't look back, but he could feel the patron's eyes on him, could hear their footsteps shuffling faster, closer. He threw open the door and stumbled into the rain, sprinting to his car. 
He fumbled with his keys, his hands shaking as he glanced back at the diner. The windows were dark, but the figures were there, pressed against the glass, their eyes glinting in the neon glow, mouths stretched wide in twisted, unnatural smiles. The waitress stood at the front, her pale hand raised as if in a sad final wave. John started the engine and tore out of the parking lot, his tires skidding on the wet gravel. He sped down the road, glancing back at the diner until it was swallowed by the night. As he drove, he tried to steady his breathing, tried to convince himself it had been some awful hallucination, a trick of his tired mind. But when he looked in the rearview mirror, he froze. In the back seat, barely visible in the dark, sat one of the patrons from the diner, a man with a torn suit and lifeless eyes, staring at him with a blank, hungry expression. John's scream echoed into the empty night, but the man didn't move, didn't blink. And as John sped down the dark road, he realized he would never be able to outrun the diner's curse. The shadowed figure in the back seat was just the beginning. Every time he looked in the mirror, he'd see more of them. Silent, hollow-eyed figures, pressing closer, filling the car, waiting for him to join them in the diner's endless, nightmarish embrace. The highway stretched endlessly through the misty night as Laura drove, her eyes heavy from hours behind the wheel. She was supposed to be halfway home, but somewhere along the winding back roads she'd made a wrong turn. Now she was lost in a town she didn't recognize, surrounded by dark, silent buildings that seemed frozen in time. Finally, she spotted a faint neon sign flickering through the fog. The Last Stop Diner. Relieved to see any sign of life, Laura parked and walked toward the door, the silence thick and eerie around her. The diner's exterior was worn down, its windows foggy with years of grime. She hesitated, but her stomach growled, and the warm glow inside promised food and rest. As she entered, a bell above the door jingled, though it sounded muffled, almost as if she were hearing it underwater. The diner was empty, except for a cook behind the counter who turned slowly to look at her. He was a tall, wiry man with a deep scar that ran from his eyebrow to his chin, and his eyes seemed to hold some dark secret. Can I get a menu? Laura asked, trying to sound cheerful. He nodded, handing her an old yellowed menu with faded lettering. There were only a few options listed, each one vaguely familiar yet unsettling. Roadkill stew, eternal eggs, silent scream sandwich. She stared at the list, feeling a prickling sense of dread. But telling herself it was just an old diner with a gimmick, she ordered a coffee and the eggs. The cook disappeared into the back without a word, and Laura found a seat near the window, noticing the heavy fog outside had thickened, swallowing up the car she'd parked out front. She pulled out her phone to check the time, but the screen remained black. She cursed, realizing it had died. Minutes ticked by, and no one else came in. The silence of the diner was unnerving, and she noticed strange things. The clock above the counter didn't move, frozen at 3.33. The booths looked worn, but there were no scuffs on the floor as if no one had walked there in years. The cook finally returned, setting her coffee on the table with a soft clink. It smelled strange, like burnt rubber, but she took a sip out of habit, cringing as the taste hit her. There was something bitter, almost metallic about it. Are, are you from around here? She asked, trying to distract herself from the unsettling atmosphere. The cook's lips twitched, but... He didn't answer. He merely walked back behind the counter, his dark eyes never leaving her. Trying to ignore the oddness of the place, she sipped her coffee again, each taste feeling heavier, as if it were pulling her deeper into some oppressive weight. She finally set the mug aside, feeling slightly nauseous, and looked out the window, half hoping to see her car wading through the fog. But there was no sign of it. The parking lot, though illuminated by the diner's weak neon glow, was empty. Excuse me. She called to the cook. Did you see where my car went? The cook looked up, a thin smile curling his lips. Everything left behind here stays here, he said, his voice low and gravelly, his words hanging in the air like a dark omen. Laura's heart raced, an icy panic creeping into her chest. She grabbed her coat, feeling the urge to leave, to get far away from the strange diner. But when she tried the door, it wouldn't budge. She pushed harder, but it was as if it were fused to the frame. She turned back, her eyes darting around the room. The cook was gone, and the diner now seemed to stretch and distort, its walls leaning closer, pressing in as if alive. She backed toward her seat, her breath quickening. 
The cook's voice echoed from the kitchen, low and rumbling. If you're here, you're already part of it. What does that mean? She shouted, her voice trembling. But there was no answer, just the muffled sound of frying oil and the low hum of machinery. She was about to shout again when she heard footsteps approaching, slow and shuffling. She whipped around to see a figure standing just beyond the counter, partially obscured by shadow. It was an old man, hunched and thin, his face obscured by the brim of a filthy hat. He lifted his head slowly, revealing deep, hollow eye sockets, empty and black as the void. Laura gasped, stumbling backward. The figure took a step toward her, its mouth opening in a gaping, silent scream. Behind it, more figures emerged from the darkness, each more twisted and lifeless than the last. A woman in a waitress uniform with missing eyes and a too-wide grin, a man with burns covering his face, and a small child whose arms were twisted at unnatural angles. They staggered toward her, their faces expressionless, but their eyes somehow filled with sorrow and rage. Laura backed up until she felt the cold metal of the counter against her spine, trapping her. She turned and saw the clock above her head now ticking backward, the hands spinning wildly. Desperately, she tried to shout, to scream, but no sound escaped her lips. She was paralyzed, her feet rooted to the floor. The figures closed in, their ghostly faces mere inches from her, each one wearing an expression of eternal torment. Suddenly, the cook's face appeared over her shoulder in the reflection of the clock. You can't leave, Laura, he whispered, his voice icy. You're already part of the diner's menu. She glanced down at the counter and saw her name scratched onto it, along with dozens of other names, each one carved deep into the metal, worn down from years of despair. The last thing she saw was the hollowed-out faces pressing in closer, their mouths opening in voiceless screams as the cook whispered in her ear, Welcome to the Last Stop Diner. Here, everyone stays forever. The diner was empty the next morning, silent and still, its lights flickering as if waiting for the next weary traveler to step inside. And there, scratched onto a booth by the window, was a fresh name, newly carved, Laura.